and I have forgotten everything about Frontier in Space. I know that was the wrong title, but we said it should be something else. Right. Oh, this is about the... Sorry. <laughs> uh, this is like the war between the... Who are they called? Uh, the Draconians. The Draconians, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And there's a neutral zone, and somebody's obviously trying to get them all in. All right. Sorry. All right. <clears throat> Hey guys, Alex and Dev from 7th Hour Films, back again with Doctor Who Classic. Last time around, we started Frontier in Space. What was that one about, Dad? I totally forgot again. Um, but yes, you just reminded me, it's the... Uh, someone's trying to uh, start a war between uh, Earth and the Draconians. Uh, and I've forgotten where it left off. Um, oh, it's it was... The Master, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. All right. uh, so there's been this tension between uh, the humans and the Draconians in the sort of Cold War scenario, or the frontier in space, as they call it. Yeah. Uh, but, the neutral zone. Yeah. On Earth, there was this one guy, General Williams, who was very anti-Draconian, so he's been looking for a way to ignite a war, and of course, who else would take advantage of this but the Master? Yeah. So, um... But... Didn't, wasn't there one line about so, how the master was working for somebody? Um, I thought there was something where he said, you know, I'm. He I, well, I can't remember exactly what it was. His disguise is that he's like a representative from another planet. Okay, and he's trying to capture the Doctor and Joe by creating these criminal records for them and then getting them. I guess technically deported back to uh, that planet with him. So, yeah, but uh, the whole thing with uh, serving another master is the Agrons. Agrons. Yeah, because they're showing up and tricking people into thinking it's Draconians attacking and stuff, okay. and they are working for the master. Okay. So, uh, and where last we left, uh, the Doctor was on a lunar penal colony, and he met uh, people from the Peace Party who were going to help him escape but then it's a trap and they're about to <laughs> be yeah sucked out into space basically without any suits so um but yeah uh we did call that it was the master it just seemed so perfect for it to be the master yeah and unfortunately i have learned that this is the master's final appearance uh because after this episode roger delgado unfortunately passed away so uh, now apparently they were planning a proper send-off for the Master, where he was going to, like, sacrifice himself as, like, a hero, and then it was going to be revealed that he was the Doctor's brother or something, and then that would be <laughs> the end of the character. But because of the uh, unfortunate passing, uh, it basically ensured that the Master would come back in another form. Yeah. So they'll bring him back, you know, a couple seasons from now just as a different incarnation and it's very strange how that keeps happening because that's why we have multiple doctors to begin with was because William Hartnell just couldn't do it anymore yeah. so they came up with this idea of having a, a new actor and now we're kind of doing the same thing again where it's like well yeah obviously it's still going to be a little while before we get the master again but it will just be a new incarnation so uh whereas I guess originally they were just going to lay the character to rest and that was going to be that so um, hmm. So yeah, very interesting stuff. We will cherish these last three episodes with him. Um, because <coughs> honestly, he's kind of been one of my favorite classic villains. Yeah. So, uh, and he's really, his performance has really made me rethink, like, future versions of the Master. So, <coughs> um, so yeah, we will be watching the last three parts of Frontier in Space today. And... Yeah, I wonder if there's go going to be any more to the title of Frontier in Space. I'm going to say no. I think it was just going to be a throwaway line. Well, the last time we saw the Ogrons, or what, Ogrons, whatever they are, yeah. weren't they working for somebody else? Didn't we speculate that they were working for somebody else? Uh, <coughs> they okay. were working for the Daleks, okay. but they explained in this episode that they're just mercenaries, so that's the explanation of like oh well that's why now they're they've been hired presumably they've been hired by the master okay so um so yeah i don't think 
Although, I will just go ahead and say that the next episode is called Planet of the Daleks. So, maybe that'll lead in. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, it looks like it. Maybe. Um, it could also not. So, uh, I, I would imagine it's just that the Agrons are just working for the Master. So, um, and I don't think... I don't think the Master and the Daleks ever really meet. I could be wrong about that. I know that uh, the Daleks and the Cybermen don't meet until modern Doctor Who. But I don't know about the Master. So, In that episode, do they team up or do they fight each other? Um, the, the Daleks and the Cybermen? Yeah. Uh, no, they, they fight each other for a while. The, the Doctor actually has to team up with the Cybermen to deal with, uh, to deal with the Daleks, actually. <laughs> So, it's a whole interesting thing. There's And it's also, it's not just the Daleks. They're, like, this specific cult of Daleks that, like, they're, they're basically the free thinkers of the Daleks. <laughs> because it's like, oh, the Daleks, they're very, you know, into their own dogma and everything. And they don't, they don't think, they get rid of all emotion. But they have four special Daleks that think outside the box. So, uh, so it's a whole thing. We'll get there someday. For anyone who's asking, uh, why don't we just start watching modern Doctor Who? <laughs> uh, you have to remember that while, yes, it takes maybe an hour and a half to record, you have to double that amount of time in the editing, and there are eight other shows going on on the channel right now. So, it's it's not something we can just do, or I can just do, really. It's, it's more down to me than anything else. So, yeah. Anywho. Anywho. You got anything else? I got nothing. <laughs> then let's just go ahead and jump right back into Frontier in Space. Listen, listen, it worked. I do hope that you're all right, Doctor. Hmm. You. No. <laughs> yes, I might have guessed. I'd hate you to come to any harm, you know. The last person you want to save you. He's committed an internal offense and is subject to prison discipline. Take him away. Well, now the master's gonna have to bust them out. What would you do with him? Oh, take him back to Sidious Fall and see that he stands trial. You, you wouldn't believe the list of crimes he's committed. I want to believe all of his crimes are actual offenses on Gallifrey. <laughs> I also just love that every outfit the Master has has a popped collar. <laughs> Defrauding the Sirius IV Dominion Bank. Evasion of planetary income tax. Assault and battery committed upon the person of a Sirius IV police commission. Taking a spaceship without authority. No. And piloting said spaceship without payment of tax and insurance. <laughs> Landing said spaceship on an unauthorized area on Sirius III. Need I go on? Well, half of those could be about the TARDIS. Oh, Joe. Oh, he at least got his outfit back. Doesn't have to wear those Crocs. <laughs> right, there'll be plenty of time for the exchange of social pleasantries. Put him inside. Did you hear that awful joke left for last week? I wanted to slow cook an alligator, but I only had a crock pot. Your health is very precious to me. Not for the moment. You see, my my employers are most interested in you. Oh, he does have employers. Now, they took my sonic screwdriver from me in the prison, but they didn't get a hold of this. Strange file. Right, let's go. Oh, not sonic shoelace. Let's take him from the Apollo landers. Hmm. They found me guilty, changed my appearance, and exiled me to Earth. And that's where you met me? Well, you... Well, there was a whole season before that, but still. War of the Worlds. <laughs> so I soon realized the trouble with Lethbridge Stewart is that he's got a military mind. Well, he is a brigadier, after all. Well, is he, is he just recapping the last three seasons? <laughs> I was gonna say, Joe's mastered the art of filibustering. <coughs> oh, but I don't, you know. I mean, either I'm with the Brigadier and I'm doing the fighting at HQ, which is very, very difficult, or else I'm running around making the tea and being General Dog's body. She's still going. Time's come, really. <laughs> oh, 
It's the Death Star. No. Was this a good idea? The ship is moving. Theoretically speaking, though, you're moving with it. Well... Oh, no. Release some of the oxygen. It'll act as a well, propellant. Well... See, this is why it must be nice to, like, be Spider-Man or have a stand or something to get you back over there. I don't think you're just gonna open a hatch on the ship that's traveling that fast. Uh, well, it also just looks like he's going down to where he already was. Like, that looks like it's above the door he just came out of. Yeah. Really ought to be more careful, Doctor. I mean, I know there's a lot of... A, lot ah, of evil in a the fluffed universe. pillow. But you Ingenious. Can't all right. By now, he's probably thousands of miles away, swimming around in space by himself. <laughs> but just in case he isn't, you come with me, Miss Grant. I'm glad he thought of that. Just in case he isn't. Oh, good job. We should take them to Draconia. Put them in the cage. But you can't do that. I'm a commissioner of interplanetary police. This is my spaceship. I tell you, you can't do that. Well, that fell apart. <laughs> editing these episodes cuz <laughs> we had this problem last week where it's like you know the doctor gets shot and then it goes on for like another 5 minutes you know when I, I thought the draconians would come in and they say and the penalty is death then you do the weird noise or whatever the the, the sting the yeah. sting that goes <laughs> that plays the credits you know instead it's just here's a beacon i guess the agrons know where where they are i i don't know i'm Whoever's editing it, maybe they're new, maybe it's the director, I don't know, but... Yeah. Or maybe, I guess it could just start with the script, but... But it's... Wasn't it Malcolm Hulk? Yeah. And he's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's just a... And it's not an, it's not an easy thing to get wrong. It's pretty simple to do a... To do a, you know, to be continued in these, but I yeah. don't know. Some of these are... They're not, they're not doing too well. Uh, minor point, by the way. The rest of the episode is just fine, so... Now, the way they could have saved that, you know, speaking as a director, is at the end, instead of showing what we assume is an Ogron, after all, he's got yeah. the bulk and everything for it, right. is that the, the uh, master hits the little button and the beacon goes off, and as their ship is traveling, you just suddenly, I mean, like the opening of Star Wars, you see this much larger ship suddenly just looming down over yeah. the Draconian ship, and then sting there and then you're out. Right. Or I was also thinking like if you show the employer. So the master is being employed. So <laughs> I mean I guess we could go back to your theory of it being the Daleks, but I, I don't know. That that'd be kind of strange, I think, but Well, yeah, considering we're now 4 episodes into a 6 episode uh storyline and we haven't seen them yet. But then again, the last time we saw them they didn't yeah. come in until the very end. They, in fact, they were barely in it at all. Right. Like, they they were just sort of... I, I don't know. It was more about, you know, the the people and the, the, the peace conference that was going on yeah. in the past. And then the humans that were being enslaved in the future and the resistance and stuff. The Daleks were just sort of the MacGuffin of the episode, <laughs> really. So, um, so it could even be that this then leads into the next episode because it is a Dalek episode. So... Yeah, I'm not sure. This is definitely, though, one of those episodes where it's like, okay, this is our, we need to move a couple pieces on the chessboard before we get to the bigger stuff. Yeah. A, a lot of episode fours tend to do that in these yeah. six-parters where it's like, and it's still good, you know, the three of them still work well together. But And, and when you realize that Joe's talking and the Doctor's escaping, all he did was get outside, 
float around for a couple of minutes accidentally, get back inside, get down into the control room, only to <laughs> realize that it wasn't going to work. So yeah. there was literally five, almost five to ten minutes there where nothing really happened. It was really just Joe talking yes. for a while, which is funny enough, yeah. but still... Um, yeah, it's definitely, I, I don't want to say like a filler episode, but it's it's one of those episodes where just things, pieces need to be moved on the board, yeah. basically. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, they're, uh, I thought it was kind of interesting, though, that they were uh, essentially rehashing the last couple of seasons in there. Yeah, and since talking, the exile. Talking about Lethbridge Stewart and all the rest of them. Right, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's a good reminder, because, you know, that's one of the things about these episodes. You kind of forget, like, oh, yeah, unit was a thing, you know? <laughs> like, the only constant through a lot of these episodes, I mean, other than the Doctor, is Joe. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you do kind of forget, like, oh, yeah, we, we were on we were on Earth with unit. We were in exile. Of course, the exile has now been lifted and stuff. But, but, yeah, but even in this episode where I was kind of sitting here like, oh, yeah, there was the President and the General and the Draconians. I was like, oh, oh yeah, I wonder if they're going to come back at some point. <laughs> And then, at, at the very least, they did show up at the end. Like, oh, okay, so... And this makes sense, of course, the Master's Plan kind of falls apart when he goes through Draconian space, through the frontier, which, I, again, that's, that's such not a good title for yeah. this. Like, you could have come up with anything else, and it could have worked, so... Yeah. Oh, man, the beard on this guy. He's got slightly more angles too. So, Father, and what's more, Earthmen I guess a chair. Space. Surely now you will declare war upon the Earthmen. Uh, for Let beard. me lead your battle no. fleets. To... If we strike first, then we shall be the victors. In such a war, there are no victors. Mm. The nobles of the court are demanding action. Mutually they assured destruction. For the honor of Draconia. Uh. I am. There is a legend among our people of a man who assisted the fifteenth emperor at a time of great trouble when we were almost. Overwhelmed by a great plague from outer space. So that space but you plague again. Could not be the I have devoted my life to the cause of law and order. And law and order can only exist in a time of What's peace. That smoke in the background. You're all right, Oja. <laughs> only during a period of social <laughs> stability. Let me take him for questioning. He will answer to me. I shall use the mind probe. Don't be wasting your time. Everyone's got a mind probe. Your brother's got the finest defense mechanism of all. Stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> then remove him. You too will go on this mission, but it must be headed by a draconian of noble rank. I shall send my son. Oh, that's going to go over well, I'm sure. I wonder how long it took them to do all those establishing shots of the ships. Bought you some food. Delicious banana. <laughs> well, that's I kind of rude. You're supposed to <laughs> peel it first. No other ship would be on a course for Earth at a time like this. We're not on a course for Earth. But naturally, because we're chasing them up. <laughs> Keep quiet and let me think. <laughs> I don't know. Rocket fire at long range, it's... I don't know, somehow it lacks that personal touch. They're closing in. How do the Agrons get any missions done if they're dumb as bricks? Your ship is one that has been reported as stolen. You will please reduce speed so that we can board you. Hello, uh, police spaceship. We are reducing speed as you request. Over. Doctor, you sure? We don't really know if it's the police. Exactly. That's why I want to get them into visual scanner range. You can't tell that that's the master on comms? Remember, he changes his voice. He, he, yeah, but he didn't. Yeah. Release the first missile. With haste. Oh. Just the first missile. The agreement was that both ships were to be unarmed. Naturally, we sent a cruiser. How else should a nobleman of Draconia travel? But its missile banks were empty. The ship was unarmed. Hmm. Way to blow so it. Was landing. Then I cannot take it so that you will now authorize the expedition. I intend to lead it. If the planet of the Ogrons exists, we shall find it. Oh, that's good. I was going to say, could we take the TARDIS? It's the quarry. Yeah. Again, and again, and again. Yeah, we haven't been outside in a little while. I wonder if there's right. roofers yeah. showing them tripping over each other. You know, Miss Grant, I'm going to set a trap for the Doctor. Because that always works. 
Mary oh, had a little lamb. Me. His fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary ran, the lamb was sure to go. Humpty Slap Dumpty him. sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Stop that, Miss Grant. It's a form of self-conditioning. You fill your mind with nonsense, and then you can't be hypnotized. See saw, Marjorie Dore, Johnny shall have a new master. Oh, so I'd never be hypnotized. <laughs> I'm always yeah, nonsense. <laughs> I was never very fond of nursery rhymes, anyhow. No, I mean, seriously. You just give up all hope of hypnotizing me, won't you? Once was quite enough. Thank you. You may have heard this noise before, Miss Grant. It works directly on the fear centers deep in your mind. Alrighty. All right. One episode to go, and it seems like we're not exactly sure where this is going. Yeah, I mean, I guess the the good thing is that the humans and the draconians are willing to see the planet of the ogrons yeah. so there's at least that but a am i crazy he did mention that he was working for someone yes that's what i thought he had said earlier yeah and at first i was thinking like okay well maybe if it's not the daleks maybe he's working for general williams but williams seems to be good now yeah. so unless this is some elaborate plan by him but that'd be kind of strange Especially after everything about, you know, while yes, he's been trying to incite war, it was all because of a misunderstanding that he destroyed that ship, yeah. basically. And again, as a director, I would have slightly intensified that exchange between Williams and the Prince. You know, then why did they send a battle cruiser? It was unarmed, you idiot. So that yeah. that would be more of a, oh, it never occurred to me that it would be unarmed. Yeah. Some, some thing. But other than that, again, the story is good. It just, you know, needs a little pumping up a little bit yeah. here and there. I'm glad they skipped straight to talking to the president, because as soon as, like, oh, well, you this is a stolen ship, well, we're going to have to board, you're under arrest, it's like, oh, for goodness sake, not again. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how many times I can watch them be arrested in one story. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did like that moment, though, when the master tries to hypnotize Joe. And she just won't do it again. Because yeah. that was the thing. She was hypnotized in that uh, in Terror of the Autons. So um, so that was good. It kind of reminds me uh, in like the second Avengers movie when Scarlet Witch is hypnotizing all of them. Except Hawkeye because he was the one that was hypnotized by Loki. So he's like, yeah, I did that once. I didn't like it. So. <laughs> Not real! I like how that's her biggest fear. Uh, cycling through all the costumes they still have in the closet. Good job, Joe. And I warn the president that the people of Earth will no longer tolerate these insulting and murderous attacks. Uh, Southern I Senator. Cries all about me. There is only one solution now. War! Well, it's strange to think that nothing changes from the 70s to now to the future in this. <laughs> so this is like the fifth or sixth cell she's been in? Ugh. Not many bananas on this planet. Probably gruel. Uh. Spoon him to death. <laughs> ah, dig. Like the Count of Monte Cristo. To just see how far down those bars go. That's a terrible sell now that I think about it. Course correction to collect Ooh. Coordinates They've expanded their spaceship set. Ah. Use some of the leftover footage from last time he did this. Well, now he's in a different suit. Yeah, that's true. And I guess it has different markings on the ship. I guess you can get away with the wires. Because he has to be attached to the spaceship anyway. Yeah. How's it going, Doctor? Bit of a shambles, I'm afraid. I'll do my best to bodge something up. Bodge? Not I've never heard that. It's coming on fast. I've heard it a bit on, like, Top Gear or something. Well, good job, Joe. That's 
So stupid. Meanwhile, in the Temple of the Ogrons, I guess. Please inform the authorities of either Earth or Draconia. I repeat, Mayday, Mayday, this is an. Thank you, Miss Grant. That was the trap. Aww. Oh, no. Now he'll think that this homing signal comes from you, Miss Grant. By the way, congratulations. You played yourself. I count on you to get up. What is that? No idea. What? Whatever it is, it's on our side. That's the large reptile they were talking about. As I wait okay. your arrival, the greatest of pleasure. You'll answer to your masters for this. Well, they are coming. Yes, they are coming. Which they means are I coming. can dispense with your dumb Well, okay, then it can't be Williams. He's already on the planet. Unarmed may be, but not unaccompanied. I brought some old friends along to meet you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, it is the Daleks. <laughs> trouble there. So where is this story going? You need a very slight adjustment. You mean reverse the polarity? No. And once the great empires have destroyed each other, I ask but one thing. Let me rule a planet Earth in your name. You know, it was actually a decent plan he had going until the Daleks came in. Oh, that dude had great eyes. Oh. Right, we'll see who rules the galaxy when this is over. Do not fail the Daleks indeed, you stupid tin boxes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Doctor, I thought you were dead. Help oh, me. Boy, that was quick. What are you doing? Telepathic circuits. Sending a message to the Time Lords. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we are just going straight into another story there. Okay, then. That's the first time I think we've ever done that. Yeah, two stories that are completely interconnected. That said, unfortunately, the next story will not involve the Master. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, unless, I'm, I don't. Unless he carries over into this one, and, the, and then they consider the the two of them as his last appearance. Maybe, but I don't know. I'm not sure about that. It could even be that they weren't intending for him to go into the next episode. So I don't know. I don't. I don't think he is. I think that's the last appearance of the master. Unfortunately, so. Um, but that does make me wonder, do the the uh, the humans and the draconians continue into the next episode? Well, it seems like they will because, I mean, this whole thing is uh, Williams and the prince are sent back to warn their respective people and then the Daleks are trying to start the war. So, I mean, it seems like yeah. it has to. Now it's a joint alliance against yeah. the Daleks. Yeah, yeah. And I could, I could honestly see, like, just the master has now just gotten away. His his plan has kind of been foiled, and now he's just sort of going. Maybe they originally had it where he would show up at the end to try to overtake the Daleks. But if the Daleks are now completely at war, because the plan was the humans and the Draconians destroy each other, then the Daleks come in, and then the master, who, to his credit, has has the best, like... What's the word I'm looking for? He has the best chance of yeah. overtaking the Daleks. But still. But he overtakes the Daleks, basically. So, maybe that's it. That now the Daleks are just against the humans and the Draconians. This combined force. Now, that sort of plan he would yeah. have to abandon. Now, again, uh, enjoy the series. Enjoying the fact that it's going to lead into the next series. But, they have... They've committed a cardinal sin here. It's just like uh, the original Star Wars. 
it has to come to an end and then you continue you have to have a self-contained story and the of course the end of that one of course is with Darth Vader spinning off out into space uh, after the thing blows up so you know that it's going to continue but here there is no end to this story yeah this story now continues into it so technically the next story should be Frontier in Space Part 7 Planet of the Daleks yeah so yeah it is a bit tricky like you could have if you had just and I mean I guess we don't know what we'll be doing in the next episode but if it was that well the the humans and the draconians they are now going to be you know at peace but now we have to go deal with the Daleks who are you know hatching you know they tried to do this plan so we now have to go deal with them maybe but you're right it does seem like we're just the next episode just continues on yeah. where this left off so yeah it's but we'll deal with that next week <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> it's it is a very strange thing that we've never really had like it's two stories but they seem to just be one big story yeah. so they're intertwined yeah and again i guess that could be you know the original idea with the master was that he was going to end up sacrificing himself in this heroic effort and then it would be revealed that he's the doctor's brother so maybe that was the original intention with the next episode was that that's how he was going to sacrifice himself against the daleks specifically so yeah i'm not sure though um but yeah very very interesting episode and it, it is sort of weird because normally when you know once you get to the end of part six you're kind of sitting here like okay so now we can just talk about the story as a whole but now we're just sort of like <laughs> no we're in the same boat as we were last week of, <laughs> we're not really sure where this is going yeah so yeah it's very strange i mean i don't know like if people would have already seen the the title of the next episode when this came out but i mean if if, if i was watching this live i would just assume next week frontier in space part seven yeah not planet of the daleks basically yeah. so yeah and there's and again this may all be worked out uh, in the next six episodes but one huge thing left over is the introduction of the giant lizard thing because they yeah. made a big thing about the ogron worshiping it then they saw it then they saw it was it didn't like the ogrons i guess or whatever because they they were afraid of it uh and then the doctor saw it and said, "Oh, that's fascinating." And then again, that's that's too big of a uh, clue to be a red herring. So, in my opinion, again, as a as a, a writer, I'd want I gotta be sure if that doesn't come in again, I'm gonna go. You guys let us down the, the wrong path there. Yeah, I mean, I suppose there's also the chance that the Agrons might not even be in the next episode yeah. if we're going specifically for the Daleks, which presumably with a title called Planet of the Daleks, it means going back to Skaro, yeah. which I don't think we've been to Skaro since it was destroyed, actually, uh, with the second Doctor. So, yeah, I don't even know if the Agrons will be there. So, yeah, if not, what was this thing? Why? It's like the the, the, the worms on Arrakis in Doom. Like, it yeah. just is. And it, I will say... Just from the brief glimpse of it, it looked like garbage. Well, but for two seconds, I was, I, yeah. I was like, ah, whatever. It's two seconds. What I, what I got from it was, it looked like a giant caterpillar or something. Although they called it a lizard, it didn't look lizard, no. lizard like at all. But. Right. It, it, it looked like a worm yeah. of some, a giant worm of some sort. Yeah. And for two seconds, I can be like, okay, you, you need to slap something together really quick because yeah. uh, you have this one thing in the script. It's like you know. It's sort of the difference of like, okay, how long is this going to be on screen? You know, if it's something that's going to be on screen for a good while, okay, you got to make it look good. But if it's something that's just there for two seconds, like, okay, here's the, the master's device that makes them you know, hear the sound and everything. It's just a box with a light on it. Pretty simple, you know? Yeah. Um, and there's also the difference of, you know, especially probably for making props, you know, making things that will be on TV versus making things that would be in a movie or even on stage or something like that. Like, there's different levels of how good you have to make that look. Now, before I forget, and I don't know, did you take a note about uh, the book that the uh, Master was reading, War of the Worlds? Uh, no. Because they concentrated on, again, if that's a clue, then that might be telling us that the resolution over the next couple of episodes is going to be that somehow 
something probably because the Daleks have already dealt with Earth people before. Maybe it's some kind of draconian plague that they kept talking about from 500 years ago. Maybe that will somehow infiltrate the Daleks and that will be the cause of their downfall. But uh, again, if that is true, that is brilliant. That's masterful. That's that's foretelling. Yeah. That's foreshadowing. If it's not, what the hell did we spend all that time looking at that book for? And they have... This is the second time they've referenced the Space Plague. Because they, they referenced it in this. They also referenced it in Carnival of Monsters. And I thought, I thought oh, well, Space Plague is just a throwaway line to... You know, like the the one battery company they talked about in that episode. Yeah. It's like, okay, maybe it's a throwaway line, but maybe they're slowly building something up. If that's the case, that's kind of weird. Because, like... And I guess in Carnival of Monsters, they also mentioned the Agrons, too. Because they had one of those. Yeah. So it's like... Is this some weird trilogy or something? <laughs> like, I don't know. That doesn't make sense, but... And and again, here's, to me, the other... Pro- it's it's easy for us to sit here because we've watched it three weeks in a row. Yeah. But if we had been watching this on regular TV, Carnival of Monsters leading into this, that's ten weeks. And yeah. would we have even remembered that somebody in the Carnival of Monster- Monsters mentioned the, the Galactic Plague? Right, right. Probably not. But yeah, it's it kind of makes you wonder. It's like, is this supposed to be like an interconnected season? Like, you know, maybe they're starting to write these stories, but make sure they're not just stories. Yeah. You know, which modern Doctor Who will do that a lot more, where there'll be references to other things, not just references to past episodes, but like there'll be something that like goes on throughout every episode. That even though it's happening throughout space and time, there's one thing that sort of connects these episodes together. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that's what they're trying to go for in these, but yeah. Um, yeah, a very, I mean, it's just a very interesting sort of ending to this story. Because, yeah, I'm sort of sitting here like, well, I feel like we didn't get enough of, like, the president and General Williams and stuff. Like, you know, the episodes four and five, like, there was a bit of that in episode five, but not too much. And a lot of times that does happen where, you know, all right, you got six episodes. The first three episodes, you start off, you have all these new characters. All right, episode four and five. Cut those out. We'll bring them back in the finale, yeah. you know? But now I'm sort of sitting here wondering, it's like, okay, well, I liked the president and General Williams and the Draconians. Like, I kind of want more of them. But are we going to get more of them in the next episode? Yeah. Because, again, it, it really does feel like, you know, we're going to come back with part seven of Frontier in Space next week. Yeah. You know, like I'll probably like for for next week's thumbnail, I'll probably it'll probably say like Planet of Daleks and I'll have like crossed out Frontier in Space in the <laughs> thumbnail because, yeah, it's, it just seems to be one continuing story. Yeah. Well, I, again, not that they would have done this, but uh, again, speaking from, you know, the future here, looking back at it, when Planet of the Daleks first comes up, the title it will say, you know, it should say Frontier in Space, and then you see a little animated Dalek come in and blast it, and as it crumbles down, then it then says Planet of the Daleks on it. Yeah. Um, I don't think that'll happen, <laughs> but that would be kind of interesting. So, yeah, I'm just not sure. It, it it feels weird. It feels weird that we've we've finished a story, but we didn't finish a story. Yeah. This, this, won't be, this must be what a lot of people think about, like, Marvel movies and stuff like that, where yeah. it's like, Ah oh, yes, you watch the you know the second Captain America movie. Good. That's movie like ten of like thirty that you have to watch in order to get <laughs> plus the Disney Plus shows and everything like that in order to get the full experience. You know, um, like that that reminds me there was someone who was reviewing all the Spider Man movies and you know at first it's really easy. You got three Tobey Maguire movies, you got th- two Andrew Garfield movies, and it's like okay now let's talk about the Tom Holland movies. Well, there's three of them. But there's also three other movies that Tom Holland Spider-Man is in. That you, and you kind of have to talk about those because he starts in, like, Civil War and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a, it, it's a strange thing. I guess, that's, I guess that's what it feels like. We finished a story, but we didn't finish a story. And that's the first time in ten years that we've done that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That it's... The, the story will keep going. And it's weird because we split up stories anyway. Yeah. You know, we, we split up this story into two different weeks so last week we were sitting here but we knew going in that this week we would be finishing the story (laughs) we didn't know that going into this so we're just sort of sitting here 
it's just all weird, you know? But yeah, well, now here's the other thing, though. Uh, and again, I'm, a lot of this is not criticism. It's criticism, it's just, a, you know, speculation. When I started watching this, I was 11 or 12 years old. So if I had been in England all this time, I would have been a faithful follower of Doctor Who. I'd be 22 now. It wouldn't disturb me the way it would have if I was 12. Yeah. So, I mean, but I'm sure a lot of people saw that last scene there and went, wait a minute. The Doctor is injured. Yeah. The Master escaped. The story didn't resolve. What's going on? Yeah. For a split second, and I knew this wouldn't be the case, but for a split second, I was like, is he going to regenerate? Like, yes. right here? Yeah. That's... Like, as soon as that happened, I was like, I don't... I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen, because I was like, well, no, because the third Doctor will meet Sarah Jane. I think at some point in this season, this and this may be Pertwee's final season, I'm not sure, but... So I kind of thought that, but it was like, that was a pretty big injury and you know that helped me back into the TARDIS and stuff like this like this could be it for him and and I was like that'd be weird and then when it started to end and stuff I was like well this can't be where he ends because you can't just switch doctors in the middle of the story that'd be crazy if not only did this story keep going into a different story but you have to switch your main actor in the middle of it so yeah that 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 would be really really strange yeah, and even, like, at the end, too, I almost forgot that he, he's calling the Time Lords as well. Yeah. So this is a serious thing, you know, that the galaxy is about to be in this great war and it's going to involve the Daleks and everything, so now he's calling the Time Lords. So, yeah, it's like, this is too big. I guess it's 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 too big for one story. Like, I don't know. And what else do we have this season? Because after this, so we've got... We've got Planet of the Daleks, which is six parts, so this story will go on for another two weeks for us. And then after that is the Green Death. And then... the, the It's just the Green Death, and that's it. So if it's just... I mean, this is starting to make me wonder... What if this story just keeps going through the end of the season, you know? <laughs> I don't know. This is... It's, it's just strange. I'm just sitting yeah. here. I, f- I feel weird. Like, it's just... The story didn't finish, and I'm just sort of sitting here like, okay, what do, what do we do now? Yeah. So, we're just gonna have to wait until next week. And with the added... The added part of No More Master. Like, and, and he's such a big part of this episode that it's like, well, how do you continue without the Master? I don't know. I don't know. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Um... Well, uh, one of the first things I wrote down was uh, keep talking as the doctor escaped from uh, prison cell number 2085 <laughs> that he was put in this episode. Um, well, you know what else? They, don't, they never brought back the, uh, the, the the peace party guys the from the prison. Yeah. Like, that just sort of went nowhere. Like, all right, and we're leaving. Bye. And it's like, okay, maybe they'll come back at some point in the next one. That'd be weird. But I don't know. I don't know what we're doing next episode. So, yeah, that... So we start off with that, with escaping with uh, Professor... Whatever his name was. And and then we just get taken by the Master. And, well, that's just that for the Lunar Penal Colony. Like, I'm glad that went somewhere. Um, but we had uh, Joe filibustering for <laughs> ten minutes until the Doctor c- got captured again, basically. So, uh... Uh, and then the Draconians came, which... I enjoyed the uh, scene in the Draconian throne room. You know, yeah. Th- that was, again, the costumes uh, and the makeup uh, and the setting. Yeah. Uh, that was all very good. And again, I would hate to think that's the last time we're going to see that. Yeah. Well, and I, it kind of looked, now that I think about it, the the set kind of looked like uh, future sets of Gallifrey. So maybe they might reuse that for some of it. And honestly, the, the costumes they have, just the shape of shape of like their shoulder pads and stuff it looks very uh time lord-esque so but yeah i i do hope that the draconians continue into the next episode because it's one of those things where we started off with the humans and the draconians and the president and general williams and all that stuff and then we bring in the master and that's great but you had a lot of really good interesting characters that you started with and now it's just the master and the ogrons who aren't that great like (laughs) Uh, like they were okay 
in uh, Day of the Daleks because they they never talked. Yeah. Like here, it's like I don't know how these guys survive. How did they get into space? Why are they mercenaries if they're that incompetent? Like, like I I, I don't know. I guess you can have the Three Stooges in space, but how do the Three Stooges get to space? Yeah. You know, an entire planet of Stooges basically. So, because even like with the uh, in Carnival of Monsters with the Lermans, it's like well they aren't the real representatives of that people. They're just some carny folk that managed to hit, you know, hitch a bus ride over to here to uh, try to set up a scam or whatever. Yeah. But well, I I would assume that a, a, an alien ship, an off-world ship landed on the Ogron planet and being the, you know, just muscle that they are, they took it over and figured out how to work it. That would be the best thing I could come up with. Yeah. Because they, they can work this the ships, so... Yeah, that's really strange. But the Draconians are really, really good. Yes. And, and, I, I'm, and I, I'm assuming they never come back again. I mean, they're not good... I, yeah, Not I don't necessarily know. villains, but they are, they're really great characters. Yeah, definitely. Like, you could, you could get a lot of episodes out of them. Yeah. So, at the very least, hopefully they show up in this next story. Yeah. Or this continuing story, however you want to call it. And those episodes seem a bit longer, too. Uh, that last one was like 25 minutes, I guess. They seemed a bit longer. Maybe it was just because they never, they never ended where I thought they were going to end. So, I mean, even down to that, so it makes you wonder, it's like, well, is that, is it just the script? But Malcolm Hulk is a good writer, so, you know, you'd think he would have a good cliffhanger. I don't know. It's, it's very strange. Yeah. I'm really just sit, just left here feeling weird about this whole thing. Because it, it just doesn't end, you yeah. know? Because even the Marvel movies, the, you know, there's a the act one, two, and three, and then it ends with a promise to keep going, you yeah. know? I guess this is just sort of our Empire Strikes Back moment of, yeah. like, well, well, we'll get him next time, and we'll, we'll go get Han back from that bounty hunter that doesn't talk until he gets his own show. <laughs> so, um... Um, well, they did have the evidence of capturing one of the Ogrons, which, again, it feels strange that it took that long to capture one of the Ogrons. They, because, again, they still seem incompetent, but I guess just the, the muscle and with, uh, with the doctor there, that's how they were able to, uh, leave one behind, basically. Um, but that was interesting. It was also interesting going into, like, the Draconian's fear of the Earthmen and stuff like that. Um, especially with the, uh, the prince, good turnaround on the prince as well, you know, going from, he seemed to be like the, the, the one who would want to go to war of the draconians, but then he really started to turn around when there was more evidence and stuff. And he, I I guess, started to tolerate Joe. I don't know if he really respected (laughs) her, but started to tolerate Joe a bit more, uh, which was interesting. Um, but yeah, the, the entire throne room scene was just very interesting yeah. with the emperor and the the uh what am i trying to think of not the i guess the formality of it all yeah. and stuff protocols yeah right which was interesting um and you know it's interesting because they mention you know oh females they're not allowed to speak you know before the emperor and stuff like that it's like you know we've never seen a female draconian and maybe that's their excuse of why they didn't hire one yeah for for the episode so, uh, let's see. Um, and then we had the whole reveal with Williams, uh, about the battle cruiser that, which I kind of like that of, you know, why did you bring a battle cruiser? It's like, well, how would any, you know, draconian nobleman travel? And it's like, okay, come on guys. Like if you're going in peace, like I get, you know, the, the entire cruiser was unarmed, but you didn't say that like beforehand. Like send like send an email beforehand. Hey, by the way, it's going to be a battle cruiser. Don't worry, it's unarmed. And then, because then once they both go through that nebula and they're you know uh, injured or whatever, you know both ships are damaged. Yeah, yeah, they're damaged. And then you know you can't send any uh, you can't send any communication. But you're in a cruiser. It's like okay, I'm I'm not saying like. You know, Williams is not at fault. He still is for uh, everything that happened. But it's like, okay, th- you could have taken some steps to try to avoid a conflict about this, you know? So, um, 
So, of course, I'm curious, like, so tensions must have been high already. Like, I'm curious, like, more of the history between Draconia and Earth, because tensions must have been high already if it's like, well, we were coming on a mission of peace, as was, you know, said, but for some reason, he just sees a cruiser, and it's not talking, and just the choice to then attack and destroy it. It's like, yeah. well, okay, if we had just been at peace for a long time... I don't know if anyone would have just randomly opened fire instead of investigating to try to figure out, like, what was happening, yeah. you know? So. Um, and again, I know people don't like us referencing Star Trek, but there was an episode of, of Star Trek in the original season where uh, basically deals with prejudice, you know? And Williams uh, is the kind of guy, according to what we've seen in the first four episodes, that says, you know... I'm, I already hate the Draconians, even if they say they're coming in peace. I'm always suspicious of them. You know, I am a security guy, and so when I see a battle cruiser that will not answer my hails, I must assume that their, uh, you know, uh, offensive capabilities are, you know, and, and then he just, out of prejudice, goes ahead and, and attack. And yeah. so that, that was a nice little moment there where, the uh, again, I would have played that up as a director just a little bit more where the prince says, don't you understand, you idiot? Your ship was damaged, but you never stopped to think that our ship was damaged, too. Yeah, so... Yeah, so that is an interesting thing, and I guess if, if you know, I, we went the entire episode without me getting out the coin jar, so maybe we're cured. Maybe we did it. But um, but I, I guess if, if we did have it out, we would put in a coin for a Star Trek reference, I guess. So we'll count that among the many things that we put in a coin for, so just imagine we did that. Um... But yeah, that was interesting, and then, uh, I, again, the whole thing of, like, you know, it's been 20 years since that happened, and in all that time, nobody, I guess nobody tried to say anything, or, I, I mean, I guess that must have also meant that tensions were high in Draconia, that even though they were going on this mission of peace, there were people back then who were like, well these earth guys i don't know about it and then once they just destroy a draconian ship it's like well i guess we'll go to war and that just sort of yeah. like well so there it must have been tensions on both sides you know well you know uh, it's there's things uh, like that all throughout earth's history um you know there's the theory that the uh, the united states really entered the vietnam war on a basically a, a trumped up incident that the, uh, apparently the you know North Vietnamese fired on a uh, ship or took a ship hostage or something like that. And, uh, and so the United States said, well, in that case, if they're going to be hostile to us, we must be hostile to them. And then it turns out that it's possible that the United States may have staged that in order to get into the war. And there, you know, there are those people, and again, another coin for World War II reference, there are people who said that uh, President Roosevelt must have known that the Japanese were going to attack, and yet he let it happen because he needed it to happen so that the United States would have a reason to join the war. So, nah. and, and that goes throughout all of history. People who will always say, you know, these wars just don't start spontaneously. There's got to be some kind of, you know, conspiracy behind it. I, I don't believe that because, again, I've, I've seen too many things, just, you know, little bitty things that happen all around the world in, in various parts of history where you just say, this is just people who are being idiots, people who yeah. are being, you know, nationalists, people who are being, uh, I don't know, again, fascist authoritarians who just say, uh, I need to do this because if I don't attack another country, then I will lose my authority here in my own country. So, Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. It's just one of those, like, and... Th that is one problem with conspiracies. It's like, oh, well, what about this conspiracy about Vietnam? It's like, oh, well, whatever. And it's like, but this conspiracy about Pearl Harbor and stuff is like, okay. At a point, you start going down a rabbit hole of conspiracies to where eventually, you know, I guess you start getting into the 9-11 conspiracies and stuff. And it's like, oh, okay, calm down. You know, like, this, yeah. is, this is getting, a, you're going a little too far. Yeah. And then obviously, once you start going down those rabbit holes, you get to the conspiracies about today, which we've talked about ironically have been uh presented in this 1970s show uh, as we've pointed out in yeah. previous episodes <laughs> um so yeah it's one of those it's like okay well you have this conspiracy or whatever and it's like okay well i don't know you could maybe think that but then it's like okay you just can't go 
you can't keep going down with every conspiracy because eventually you're going to get to the point of like well clearly the earth is flat and there's ice walls around it like a bowl and it's like what on earth are you talking about <laughs> take a plane up you'll find if you start here you'll loop back around you'll get back to that point and besides, uh, again, there's uh, I've been seeing this joke a lot lately that uh, if the Earth were flat, cats would have knocked everything off of it already. Yeah. Well, no, because that's why there's the ice bowl ah. or whatever. <laughs> so uh, that's a new one I've learned about. Uh, I was watching, uh, it was a clip of uh, the comedian Bill Burr on Conan O'Brien, and he was talking about that. Like, He was like, you know, for like the past 50 years, like nobody said the earth was flat. And suddenly in the last five years, I don't know where this came from, that like, no, the earth is flat. And there's this giant ice bowl that holds it like cereal. And you can rent a boat and go see the ice wall. And it's like, really? Go do that, why don't you? Take a plane. You'll find, I'm sure, why won't you just show me this ice wall? So, yeah. Um... And, you know, normally we're we're very all inclusive here at the channel, and you know whatever your beliefs, religion, and all that stuff that that you know that can be totally fine. But honestly, if you believe the Earth is flat, I'm just gonna say you're a moron. So, <laughs> and if you're offended by that, I don't care. So then you're a moron. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where I'm going to draw the line on anything. You know, you can have your you can have political beliefs and religious beliefs and all that sort of stuff. But if you think that we live in a cereal bowl. I'm just going to call you a moron. <laughs> Moving on. So Joe beat the hypnosis, yes. uh, which was also interesting. Back on topic. That's probably the most far we've gotten f off topic ever. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, but that was really good, Joe beating the hypnosis and then even beating uh, the fear machine as well. So, you know, we kind of joke that it's like, oh, well, she's not really a unit soldier. She didn't really have training or anything. And they even reference again here that it was her uncle who pulled strings to get her that job at yeah. unit but honestly she has really improved over you know the three years she's been with them so um of course then she still falls for it trying to contact the doctor which is exactly what the master needed to lure him in so almost she almost got it now i you know I, we kept uh, yelling at her to you know punch him or slap him or something but that would have been cool if you know when that last uh, couple of images come up uh, that, you know, she just walked right over and like, grabbed him by the beard and said, I know it's you, you know, just, just something. She couldn't obviously physically hurt him or overpower him, but she could, you know, just even grab his lapel and say, this isn't going to work. I figured out how to stop it. Yeah, so. Um, but still, a good moment for Joe. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we had the reptile... And speaking of conspiracies, apparently reptiles control the government. So, uh -huh. and they're doing a bang up job of it. So, well, that's one of the. I know I'm making a lot of dad jokes today. Uh, here in uh, Oklahoma, one of our state symbols, we have a state reptile. It's called the uh, collared lizard or mountain boomer. But when I'm assigning the the uh, the assignment to my students, I tell them that one of the things they're going to have to look up is our state reptile, and then I tell them, and believe it or not, it's not a politician. Oh, yeah, um, although the w without getting too far into it, there are a couple politicians in the state that I could look at and be like, I think you're a reptile. <laughs> so, um, anywho, um, so yeah, there was the reptile on the planet, which again, it didn't look amazing, but I don't even think it was there for three seconds. Yeah. So I kind of I'll, I'll give that a pass. If it shows up more in Planet of the Daleks. Then maybe I might get a bit more critical about that design, yeah. but I, I don't know. I'm not even sure. Like, I really, like, I looked at it just completely, and I was like, I'm not sure what this is. It's like a marshmallow thing. Pink like marshmallow with eyes, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was very strange. Again, the, the fleeting glimpse that I got of it, it gave me the impression that it was some sort of, you know, caterpillar-like thing. Yeah. And I guess we could, we could pop it up here on the screen and see... What is that? Like, it's... I, I don't know. That looks... I'm, it almost I, looks like a hand puppet. <laughs> yeah, like, it It kind of looks like the the leftovers from the, the gel guard, as apparently they were called in The Three Doctors. 
it looks like just that, but they took all the balls off of it, and except for one, which becomes an eyeball. Yeah. But again, for three seconds of it being on screen, I'll give that a pass. You don't want to spend too much money on yeah. that. So hopefully that just never comes back. But if it never comes back, why have it in the first place? Yeah. You know, especially not even just there in that moment, but why have that shrine and you know specifically point out this is what the Agrons worship and stuff. Yeah. Although they seem to fear it more than they worship it, so I don't know. Um, but then, I mean, I can't believe since what, what was it? it was it was episode one where they. Uh, showed the Agrons, I'm pretty sure. And you were like, oh, well, if it's the Agrons, it must be the Daleks. And this entire time, they're like, no, it's not. It, it can't be the Daleks. It's, just, it's the Master and there. But as soon as he said, oh, yes, well, I'm doing this for my employer. And it's like, oh, crap, it is the Daleks then. <laughs> it, it's got to be. Who else employs the Master? Unless, yeah. I was kind of thinking, like, unless it's some crazy twist that it's the Time Lords that are trying to make this war happen. Yeah. But that doesn't really seem like the Time Lord style. No. So, um, so yeah, but it, it, yeah, it's the Daleks and yeah, even as we were going on, it's like, well, if they were going to introduce the Daleks, wouldn't they introduce them here, here, or here? And it's like, no, because they were barely in the last episode they were in. So they're just at the end and it's leading into the next episode. So, so good job. Good job calling that. Uh, you called the Daleks. I called the master in this episode. But we have no idea what we're going to call about next episode. I have no idea, but whatever it is, it's on our side. I guess. <laughs> I we'll guess it out. is. Yeah. Uh, um, you got any other conspiracy theories you'd I like to got debunk? Nothing. Um, I know there's a whole. I think there's like a documentary or something about conspiracy theories about The Shining. I feel like I've mentioned this before on Could, in this maybe. series, but um, but it's just reading into everything about The Shining just way too much like uh, I think there's one where it's like The Shining is an allegory for the Holocaust because it's a German typewriter that Jack Nicholson is typing on or something and then there was one thing because it also has to get into because well it's Stanley Kubrick and clearly Stanley Kubrick faked the moon landing well I was going to say speaking of that that's the only one that I've ever come into any kind of vaguely close contact with uh, having gone to the University of Arizona in Tucson and having crossed through southern Arizona and southern New Mexico, uh, that does look like a lunar landscape out there. I mean, it would be very easy. Well, yeah. uh, but, uh, again, the problem is getting the lights and getting the movements, because let's face it, the gravity on the moon is one-sixth that of Earth, yeah. and, and trying to get all that staged, even with the special effects of 1969, would have been nearly impossible. Yeah. Well, I love... Uh, apparently in that documentary there's one guy it, it's hilarious where he says I fully believe that we went to the moon and we landed on the moon I just don't believe that we had the equipment to film it so the footage was fake but we did go to the moon and it's like <laughs> well okay that's not the craziest thing but I love the other the, the joke about that that it's like well they hired Stanley Kubrick to fake the moon landing but he was so professional that he wanted to do it on site. <laughs> so on location, yeah, do it on location to fake the moon landing. So, um, but yeah, I don't know what that documentary is called, but it sounds hilarious. And apparently, like, because I watched a video where they were talking about it, it's just like a bunch of normal-looking people just in their dining rooms with just the dumbest theories about that movie. On all of our streaming services, you should look up a film called Capricorn One. Because it is about how the United States knew we couldn't get to the moon ahead of the Russians, so we actually faked it. But the idea was that in order to prove that we had done it, that the three astronauts had to die in transit. You know, they would get there, but somehow... Not. But the fact is, the spaceship goes up, but instead of disappearing the way it's supposed to, it actually comes back down, and the astronauts survive. And they have to try to get back to civilization to tell everybody, hey, this was all a big setup in the first place. And, of course, the government, the CIA, the FBI, and all those people are trying to stop them because if this gets out, you know, then we'll be ruined internationally. So Capricorn mm. 1, if you've never seen it, interesting film. All right. And with all that being said, we're Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films, and we will see you guys next time for our continuing story of Planet of the Daleks.
Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around to any of those. There's a playlist for all of our Doctor Who classic reactions, as well as another Doctor Who playlist of some variety on screen. On screen as well as also a subscribe button and a Patreon button, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.